All you right. ready? You yeah. want to roll? Let's do it. All right. Thank you for joining us, everybody. This is episode three of Chine On. I'm Chris Hine. I'm here with my brother, Greg. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Pretty good. Good. This is, uh, you know, this is pretty usual for us. We generally only speak through microphones <laughs> and while we're on cameras. So this is real natural for us. This is this is real like real natural feeling i'd say yeah we we try not to actually talk off camera or mic because mm-hmm. you're just not very bearable yeah <laughs> very limited eye contact <laughs> uh the minimum amount possible is you know the best yep so um i want to talk about a couple things today a whole bunch of things okay. um a lot of conspiracy theories that we're going to touch on today. <laughs> no, but so you you just left ATP like two months ago. Yep. What have you been What have you been doing? Yeah. So, uh, well, it, it took a little bit of time off this summer, uh, as you know. I have three kids back at home. One is uh, is nine months old now. And so, um, I figured it was a good time to, uh, hang with the kids, take the summer and, um, and get to spend some quality time with them. I think it's, uh, I've had kind of a a unique opportunity to do that. Um, you know, for those of you who, who don't know, uh, kind of my, my history, um, for the last, I don't know, 10, 12 years or so, I've been with, uh, our company flight docs which um, provided, uh, it was a software as a service or a SaaS business in business aviation. And we sold um, kind of services that helped uh, aircraft owners and operators keep track of their maintenance, their inventory and purchasing, their flight operations. And uh, last year in 2020, we actually sold that business to uh, a company called ATP, we merged with ATP. They provided some uh, other products and services in aviation, so like technical publications and diagnostics um, and chronic defect uh, analysis. And um, so at Flight Docs, I was the the president there for some time. I saw that company, yeah. you know, grow from from pretty small at the time I joined to pretty decent size, about a hundred employees in, in the beginning of 2020, um, joined ATP, merged with them. I stayed on there, um, as a uh, chief strategy officer and, uh, chief marketing officer and, and did that for about a year and, um, and decided, you know, it was, it was time to, to, you know, get into something new. So I've taken a little bit of time off and in the process of, uh, of starting up something new now. Yeah. What is it? GHC Interactive? Yeah. All right. So tell the people, (laughs) tell the people about what you're doing. Yeah, sure. So, uh, new company is, uh, going to be called GHC Interactive. Um, and you know, what we're, what we're doing is working with businesses in the aviation industry to help them accelerate their growth and, you know, essentially hit their goals. And I've spent the last about 12 years, I guess now in this industry, um, I've been fortunate enough to be part of a a great organization where we were able to see awesome growth and I've, I've been able to be, um, you know, a big part of that growth. And during that time, I was really involved in really every aspect of the business. And yeah. so, yeah, you were, um, you know, I've, I've been heavily involved in, you know, sales and business development. Um, you did, and- you did everything. I mean, after, so I wasn't, I wasn't there for very long. Well, yeah. I was, you know, I was on and off an employee there for about 10 years, but like <laughs> I was back there full time for four years, but yep. even in those, 12-ish years since I think 2009 when you graduated college it was like you did everything you were you were yeah you ran sales at one point when you were down here and then you built the whole you basically built the whole inventory platform at least led the whole design team and then rolled that into enterprise that came out and then you were meeting with all of the people like the big customers that would actually 
like make decisions on what was going to happen on our like our platform and all that kind of stuff so, yeah i mean you did legit, yeah I, like everything you know i i really um you know personally i really like being involved in like every aspect yeah. of it um you know when i started at flight docs i was in customer service and doing data entry and working with customers, helping them on the platform, getting them trained, and then managed operations, and then got into really running the sales and marketing. And um, and that led me into, you know, as we were out there selling this product, um, I, you know, saw, okay, here's the product that we have, here are the customers that we're trying to, to go after. And um, and what products and features do we need to to get those customers? And I was able to yeah. you know, work directly with product development to you know continue to evolve the product. And, and my time there, we actually had like three full platforms that we had launched during that time. Yeah, and you so, had what you had the original like the I guess it wasn't one but you guys launched two then enterprise and then operations like right at, yeah or what was the yeah so we had um in back around 2010 i was involved in the launch of uh flight docs 2.0 uh shortly thereafter we launched the first um maintenance tracking application ipad application which was like 2011 oh, yeah. 2012 and I then thought, i thought another company did that first six years <laughs> later <laughs> yeah um but you know, so we, we did that. We then started, you know, as I was out there and, and we were looking at bigger and bigger flight operations, we, we understood like the product needs to expand and do more for these larger scale operations. Yeah, sure. And, um, and we said, okay, do we continue to develop on what we called our 2.0 platform or do we need to start investing in a new platform that's going to allow us to to take things to the next level and so um you know we we built uh first we did our inventory and purchasing platform we then actually then built the meet the updated maintenance tracking platform rolled all of that into flight docs enterprise which was in 2016 and then in 2000 and i guess it was 2000 18 or 2019 we launched the flight operations yeah. platform oh, and so yep. just constant you know kind of constant evolution and so um you know being involved like first in the in business aviation the aviation uh industry as a whole and then being involved in all these different aspects of, of growing a business really gave me a, a fast track into understanding the different components involved in, in the company. And now with uh, GHC Interactive, you know, I'm looking to take that experience and help other companies achieve the same things that, that we were able to achieve. Well, yeah, and it's, it's kind of interesting too with some of this stuff and I actually didn't get to feel this really. I started to feel it when we launched the customer success team there um, and got to like go out and do trainings and be in the field and get real world feedback when, you know, a lot of stuff would work, but there were certain things that guys would be like, you know what? <laughs> This button is like, and and you really get to like experience what it's like from the customer's perspective, and then doing sales there that had a big impact on it too of seeing it from the business side and from the customer side. Which sure. when you're not out in the field, you don't really get that. So you you started doing that pretty much right away with being in customer service, and then you were out in the field pretty quickly after you started there i mean yeah. like what 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 did that do for you in terms of like getting in front of the customers and like how did that change your perspective on the business itself what value it brought how you could help people how you would end up building these platforms i know this is like a broad question yeah, but like sure. what it, did that make anything click for you yeah i think that you know 
for me, as you as you look at any business, um, there's a couple different pieces of the puzzle that you got to put together to really create a, a very strong business. Yeah. And for us, it was really the the technology, and so our our, our product was really strong. Um, we then paired that with you know top notch customer service. And um, those two, I feel like you really have to have you know strong product, strong Both. service, and then you have to understand, okay, how do you take that to market? Like through marketing and through a direct sales team or through channel partners. Um, you mean like the method? Yeah, like oh, how, okay. how you actually go about, like what's the structure and how are you going to, to tactically do that? And so I think that, um, you know, being out there and actually like me going out, showing up to a hangar and sitting down with a maintenance team or a flight operations team and saying, here's our product, like, and asking all the questions about how do you do things now? What are you trying to achieve? Where are the, where are the pains in your operation? Like, where are you still using paper? Where are you seeing like delays? Where are you seeing like lack in, in efficiencies? And that experience was just super valuable because Definitely. you get to understand the business and your customers' businesses and, and what's important to them. Yeah. And you're able to, you know, first, obviously, like uh, from a sales perspective, you're able to tailor your approach to really like get in there. Uh, expose the pains that they're having and show how your products and services can help them. Yeah. And, and benefit you start to them. get the, you start to get the feel of the different types of operations and what those pain points are going to be and how you actually can help. But yeah, you, you start to get a sense for them on an actual personal level. It, it goes beyond like, uh, well, here's what we do. It, and exactly. you know, we, we, we've got a do list. Yeah. And if, if it's you, got a nice button and it's two less clicks and they're like, well, that's that not what matter. our problem is. Yeah, so. exactly. Like, and, and I think that's where, you know, a lot of companies uh, struggle with their sales efforts is like, okay, you have a good product. You know, there's a lot of comp, if, if you don't have a good product, you're probably, you're probably not going to be around for, for very long. And so, or you have to have like really good or, sales. Yeah. Really, or yeah and, and still even with that you, you struggle. So I yeah. think it, it, having a solid product is, is really important, but a lot of companies, really struggle with the sales component because they go for kind of like a show and tell type of approach where <laughs> yeah. it's like, Hey, sit down and I'm going to take you through a 90 minute demo on like every feature of the Let system. Let me start with this slide that shows <laughs> yeah. you 400 of our customers that you've never heard of. Exactly. And are you impressed yet? No. no. <laughs> well, let me tell you about our system. Like, oh yeah. my God, like watching paint dry. Yeah. And, and, and so, then you leave, you leave that presentation. Like none of my questions were really answered. I still don't actually know more about my problem or about solutions. Yeah. I think when you and I were going through like being demoed by some different companies and stuff like that, uh, yeah. for different, like as we, as the company was growing, going from small to medium sized company, we were getting all kinds of things for, you know, launching training seminars or like, you know, what phone system we were going to use. And you'd be sitting there on a phone call and you're just thinking in the back of your head, like, Jesus, like, I hope I don't sound <laughs> like this when I'm talking to people. Like if yeah. I, if I do sound like this, I'm going to call everybody I demoed last month and just like apologize. Yeah. We, we sat through some really, really <laughs> painful demos um so uh and they're like talking into their into like their like headphones um so you're gonna want to hit the drop down button yeah like wow this didn't help me no at all no and you know and, and some companies really struggle with that you know other companies have really um i'd say combated that by having such a good product and good marketing that you know for some of them, like the salespeople don't have to be that great to, to grow the business. They're but, kind of detractors and you're like, I want to yeah. buy this from you. And they're like, 
Yeah, well, it's, you know, you probably shouldn't. Yeah. Like, all right, I'm going to buy it anyway. Yeah, and like a good example of that was, um, you know, we, we had implemented Salesforce as our CRM, you know, years ago. I don't know, six, five, six years ago. And um, we, had, we ended up running most of the company off of that product, you know, from we started with sales. We then um, we then implemented it on our customer service side, then yep. our enrollments. And so uh, it was integrated with the Flight Docs platform. It was integrated with finance. And we, we knew like, OK, this is going to be the product for us. Obviously, Salesforce has that reputation. And um, and really, we knew that it had the feature set that that um, we wanted. But God, like sitting through their sales presentation, when I said, I just want to buy it. And they insisted on like taking you through the full demo process. And it was just a painful sales experience. But, you know, they're a great company and they, they have the best product out there. So it works for them. Yeah. Unfortunately, like that doesn't work for every business, right? And so for- Especially if you're not the, if you're, you're not, not the, the leader. incumbent no. and you didn't start it. No, Early so on, you know, you so a lot luxury. of a lot of companies out there really struggle in getting off the ground, or they, you know, they went out and they started the company and they had success early on, and maybe it was the founder that really went out there, had the passion, really understood the customers, understood the industry, got kind of a base customer, uh, base customer base, but um, when they go to scale they don't necessarily understand like, okay, here's how we have to, you know, represent our brand out there. Here's the content that we have to put out there to, you know, build awareness around our products and services. And here's how to train other salespeople on, you know, being able to execute on this strategy and and build our customer bases. And that's where you start seeing a, a lot of companies. And I've seen this in, in business aviation. Yeah. And this is why, you know, I really want to help companies um, in these couple different areas. Yeah. Um, in that, you know, they've, they've gone out, they've seen success. They have a, a successful business. Like they're they're um, maybe not growing all that fast, but they're profitable. They have a good customer base. They have a loyal customer base, um, but they don't necessarily know how to take things to the next level. And um, or, you know, or maybe they do and they just don't have the resources or the time sure. uh, or the team members to to help them do it. And I think that's where, you know, we come in and um, we'll be able to really you know, take our experience um, and our resources and help them accomplish something that that maybe they saw as being a, too big of an obstacle in the past. Yeah. Well, and plus you can take like every business going through has pitfalls when they're growing and things they just get like wrong, even if they get it wrong for, you know, like sure. a year or like extended period of time. So you do have that benefit of, yes, you have the success, but also you can kind of look at some of the stuff that like we didn't get right off the bat. Right. You know, and you can go like, Hey guys, I know that this sounds good for these 15 reasons, but here's like the one reason why it's not actually sure. going to serve you. And you can kind of sidestep that probably save yeah. like a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's, I mean, we, over the years, there was a lot of trial and error in, in going through this yeah. and. Um, you know, today there's, there's definitely a lot more resources out there on like, you know, how to, to do these things, but they're typically pretty like cookie cutter. Um, you know, they talk about a lot of, you know, bigger industries, um, which, you know, have a lot more people have a lot more, you know, I'd say less focus. And so, um, there's been very, you know, when you look at aviation or business aviation as a, uh, an industry and a, and a sub segment of that, um, there's a lot less companies to really look at and see, okay, how, you know, yeah. how did they, how did they achieve this success? Well, and part, and part of to what I'm trying to do it with my, with this business yeah. as well. And I think part of what you and I were talking about with some of this is the differentiator 
of actually being able to do things for people and deliver them something because we ran into this with a shitload of consultants <laughs> that we tried to bring on at flight sure. docs that was like yeah we're gonna come in and we're gonna we're gonna not only teach you how to do it but we're gonna be partners and we we do this and this and this and then like you turn your back for one second and it's like oh yeah we haven't done anything for three weeks and also uh that's gonna cost you sixty thousand dollars and you're more confused when you end the process and then since nobody was really managing that pro like project w there was a bunch of times where we would be f like you would go backwards yeah and then you and would just end up having to do it yourself and so like that's part of what i'm trying to do with this too is like have people come in sit down talk you leave and i'll take care of the rest so that way at the end of the process you have an actual tangible product right something like that in your case it's going to be different but it's like here's where you were at with sales and then here's where you're at now with this here are all the marketing things in place you know even operations you you ran operations there for how many a years a long time yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was involved in, in it all for you know for the the full time you know i was involved in it obviously as the the team grew you know my day-to-day -day responsibilities were um maybe alleviated a little bit but I was still involved in it, but, um, I, I think that the, um, you know, as we're looking to, to work with companies out there, um, you know, I've been burned by consultants, like you said, you know, quite a bit where they say, okay, well, we can help you with that. They don't really dig into their customer's business. They don't do a good, uh, good job understanding what you really need and what like the perfect outcome is. So it's, it's very, they come in kind of with a prescription without really understanding like what the symptoms or root causes of, of the issues are. That's a good point. And actually the one consulting group that actually worked while we were there, they were doing the, uh, ROI calculator. Sure. That's literally what they did is they, they went out and either i think mostly phone calls but still they actually called a bunch of our customers and t like interviewed yeah. them for an hour then another hour and then based on all of these things they came back and gave us some actual tangible stuff and they gave us a tangible thing at the end where we can go in plug people's numbers in and start to give them a sense of like okay yes you're going to be paying us this but here's what it comes back to and that they were really the only consultants that I got to work with that really did something. You had good tech people. Yeah, I didn't sure. get to work with the tech people, but yeah. Um, yeah, they were the only ones that I got to work with. But they actually dug in, and when they said they were going to talk to our customers and do all that stuff, they actually did it, and it had like a positive result. Sure. The other stuff, it was like pulling teeth to do something. It was like pulling teeth to give somebody tens of thousands yeah, of dollars exactly yeah it was like <laughs> what are we paying you for yeah and so you know as i as i'm looking at this business and um looking to you know work with you know there's all different types of companies within aviation um i'm really looking to like any customers that we take on i really want to plug into the their business like okay who who is on your team? Who are your customers? What is your product like? What have your past results looked like? What have you tried? What have you not tried? And really get a good understanding of like every aspect of it because we want to make a big difference in these operations. You know, the, the companies that we're looking to work with, like there's like this, um, this potential that just needs to be unlocked. And like I said, maybe they don't have the time or the resources or they haven't figured out how to unlock it. And that's where we want to like really go in, get a good understanding of it, put together a plan on how we're going to unlock it and then help them like go through the full process of executing it. 
And so it's not like, uh, hey, we're just going to tell you what to do uh, without knowing anything about it. Like we're going to go through that process. We're going to see it through and we're going to make sure that it has success. And one of the things that, you know, I've learned along the way, whether you look at like new product development or sales or marketing, um, everything is iterative. And so, yeah. you know, we're, we're um, yeah, of course, like there's, there's kind of projects um, that we would be willing to work on, but we're really more looking at, you know, working with customers on an ongoing basis because, you know, you, you can, everybody can agree on a certain path, but it might be slightly off once you, once you're out there and it's, you know, in the real world, you discover things that you, that you didn't catch up front. Obviously we want to try and, you know, try and catch as many of those things as possible, but you know, the plan is never a hundred percent. You always got to make changes. And so we're looking to really work with companies on an ongoing basis. So we get them heading in the right direction and then we keep them on track and keep iterating on top of our plan so that we can keep hitting results. It's basically the same thing you were doing with customers from yeah. Flight Docs. It's, it's going in, understanding what their actual business is, and then being the one to actually talk to them too, sure. and then take it back to the team and then build and develop something that actually works for them. Yeah, exactly. So I actually have a question separate of aviation and all this stuff. Yep. Like as we're we're both starting businesses now. I mean, like how do we I mean we're seeing the the plans changing literally as we're sure. looking to move <laughs> offices and stuff, but like how how do we take this same stuff and incorporate it into the birth of a company. Like, yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, if you were looking at what I'm doing, like. Sure. Yeah. I think, you know, first, um, whether, you know, what, what you're really looking to create, what I'm really looking to create are essentially services. So we don't necessarily have a, a tangible product at this point, maybe yeah. in the future we might. Um, but I think that it starts with quality. And so, you know, really, um, having a high quality product or service is yeah. where it needs to needs to start with. And then um, from there, it's really, you know, starting a new business, you got to start with that first customer. Uh, you make that first customer happy and you keep building on top of that and you start growing that customer base and you figure out, okay, how do you, how do you scale it from there? How do you take it to the next level? And um, that's where, you know, really like building that brand comes in. And I think that, you know, we both put in some work into, you know, initially building that initial brand so that we, when we, you know, launch, uh, we have a, a good impact kind of right out of the gate. Yeah. Um, but I think that's kind of like where it starts. I think that maybe answers your question. I don't know. No, it's a good point because that, and that was what, that was the thing that made it possible to actually make this change and, and go do this was, was getting a customer and just being like, Oh, okay. Like I can, I can do this. I don't know what's going to happen. I could totally like, I could totally fail. Sure. That's totally possible, but it's like, okay, I've got one. Let me make this the best thing I possibly can. And then try to figure out, yeah. The rest. I think it I think it goes back to my point on like iterating yeah. on top of it. Um, you know, as I'm looking at this business, like I don't say I don't I don't have like this clear cut picture in my head of okay, in three years we need to be at this point and this is what it needs to look yeah. at. You know, it's really taking, okay, we have a certain skill set, we can provide certain products and services and we're going to roll with it and figure out like, okay, what do these customers really need? How can we help them? And you keep, you know, evolving from there. Yeah. And, um, I'm, I, I've never really been like a person that says like, Oh, I have this goal or yeah, I have this either. milestone <laughs> or I need to be here by this, you know, this, this certain point. It's really about like just kind of getting up every day and, jumping into it. And, um, I think, 
you know, for some people that doesn't work for me, that's kind of like how I operate best. It's just, you know, kind of just rolling with it and, and it. see where, you know, see where it goes. And I think that, you know, as we, um, as we look at, you know, doing stuff like this, whether it's podcasts or videos, um, I think that this is a really important piece of, of business moving forward is that, you know, being, getting that exposure, um, being involved in your industry and on social media yeah. and putting out, you know, consistent content is just really key to continuing to, you know, continuing to expand your business. And I've, even, I've seen that. And, you know, even in the last week, you know, different people reaching out to me and saying, you know, and these are people that, yeah, I wasn't necessarily like targeting yeah, or thought connect, that I would yeah. be working with. And they're saying, Hey, can I get some of your time? Like I saw you, um, you know, I saw you do this, this live event or, you know, I saw some of your videos or we heard about this, this news, like, what do you think about this? And you know, that's, I think how you get involved in some pretty interesting stuff is, is getting out there and, you know, constant like just having that exposure out there well and i think part of it too is putting out good content that people want to see that's actually helpful to them and then seeing what that turns into like a good example that um kind of even got me into being able to do the podcasting from audio production was i would spend legit like dozens of hours on youtube trying to figure out how to make my songs sound good quality right. And they always sounded terrible. Like no matter what, like I couldn't make anything I recorded at home sound good. And I didn't want to go back to the studio and spend like $10,000 for five songs and kind of over a six month process. And I don't have a band anymore. So I'm going to be dealing with like people doing heroin and stuff <laughs> like that. I just want to be at my house and make music. So I would go and I'd see these videos on YouTube from musician on a mission and they teach you how to do these things like, yes, everybody talks about this. Here are the basics. And then over time, I'd see their ads over and over again. And then finally, I watched a webinar and I signed up for the course. And it, like, it wasn't cheap, but it was like they gave me so much value over the course of three or four months that when I saw what they were offering and like it had a slight differentiation than just YouTube videos... I was like, all right, I trust it. Sure. I'm, I'm willing to go with it. And apparently in the past year, they've been growing like crazy. Like they said, sure. I talked to one of the sales guys there after the fact. And he's like, yeah, we've literally like the company's grown like tenfold in a year. Yeah. Just by doing that. And the guy's been putting stuff out for, I don't know, five, six years or something like that. But people he found like a community of people that wanted that information. He turned it into something. And then I like think a and, rocket and, ship. And, yeah. And, and when it. you provide high quality content and you become yeah. really like a resource in the segment that you're in, yeah. it allows you to monetize that. And now, you know, that's what you're seeing, seeing there is like, okay, we can continue to put out this free stuff people now built this audience up. They understand what we're doing and the quality that we're doing it. Are they willing to pay for it? Yeah. And, and the answer is yes, because yeah, you can go and piece together all these different YouTube videos, but you know what they've put together is a cohesive product that's high quality and gives you exactly what you need without bouncing over to 10 different channels and trying to piece it all together. Yeah, exactly. That it was that. And then also you got some feedback too, from people. So you would send in your mixes and then somebody would be like, no, you have too much stuff going on at like 6,000 Hertz, whatever, it, whatever feedback they would give you, it would like help shape and move it forward. So like, yeah, those like kind of key differentiators made a big difference, but you said something of just showing up every day and just like, do what you need to do so matt and i recorded a couple of these yep. the first episode we were talking about uh the war of art by stephen pressfield have you ever read that or listened to it or anything no it's pretty interesting because it ties in the iterative process that mm -hmm. you're talking about of 
it's literally show up, do the work, and then it starts to unfold itself to you as you're doing the work. Like, yeah. don't spend so much time making a plan and worry. Like, this song is going to be exactly like this, and then once I get to this verse, it will be like this. Yeah. It's, it doesn't ever happen that way, and if you try to be too rigid from the start, that I am definitely guilty of that. It's like <laughs> perf- like pit wop. Yeah, Like sure. April would talk about. It's like, try to be perfect. You try to structure it too much, and you just you you lose like the dynamic yep and for those of of you don't know pit wop is uh perfection in the way of progress yeah and so it's kind of uh (laughs) you get stuck and so you know yeah i i think that's a that's a huge thing is that is that a big thing that blocks like small businesses from getting to the next level i think so i think i mean it's it's definitely a factor um in that you know okay well we don't know how to do this exactly and so let's plan and let's meet and let's plan and let's create this and and um oftentimes what what i find is like let's just go like let's just do it if you have an idea Obviously, you don't want to do things that, you know, are detrimental to your company. You want to make sure that you're messaging and, and uh, you know, if you're spending money or making an investment, like, you got to be wise about it. But no, there is no playbook on what's going to work and what's not going to work. Yeah. You know, when you're taught, the, everything is evolving. Technology is evolving. Every industry is evolving. Like there is no playbook on do this and, and it will work. And so, you know, for companies when they're thinking about, okay, um, let's do a podcast or let's do video content or like let's make a change to our pro- product or let's try a different talk track when we're calling customers. Yeah. Um, th- I think that a lot of companies will spend a lot of time thinking about all the reasons why those things aren't possible or why they won't work or is the quality not going to be there or, or whatever. And so they end up going back to status quo. And that's where you see a lot of companies have been doing the same things for the last five, 10 or 20 years and have really limited their their potential. And so, you know, once you start getting in the groove of, you know, just doing, um, and, and this isn't just for companies either. I'd say it's for individuals and- sure in uh in whatever career path that they choose and i've seen a lot of people you know say i don't know how to do that i don't know anything about that you know i don't know how to do marketing or i don't know how to do video or i don't know this or or whatever i don't know about aviation um and they let that really limit their career and you see the people that are are super successful out there and that have accelerated their careers have taken more of the approach like okay i don't know it but i can go out and i can i can learn it and i can do it and yeah maybe the first pieces of uh you know the first video you shoot or the first call you make or the first product you put out isn't you know isn't award-winning but you keep doing it and you start getting pretty good especially when you look at, you know, like, okay, if you're in an industry where, you know, maybe there are a couple of years behind and there's not that many people doing it, now's the time to get a head start and start, like, start taking advantage of new technology or new channels or new sales processes. There's a lot that can be done. Just getting started can mean a 5% increase or, you know, 5% more successful. Um, yeah. Or, and, and you start growing, okay, and now we could start seeing a progress from, you know, 1% to 5% to 10, and you start seeing, you know, some, some good success. So don't stop, don't get stuck. Yeah. You know, just do. And I think that that's, that ends up being a, a pretty successful, you know, um, path for people. So how do, how do small companies get out of that mindset? Like if they are in that trap, is it a, is it a, 
a company like a company culture thing that needs to change or is it does it come from individual people and does it have to come from the top or can it come from people in the middle you know yeah sure i i think that you know it's it's a good question i think it's a it's a tricky question um you know i think that in general if you're looking to make like big changes in the organization then it really does either needs to come from the top or the top needs to to recognize it and understand it and support it and so you know i have seen organizations that have been static for a long time and you know the ceo or the president or owner realizes it they realize okay you know we've been successful up until this point doing you know the status quo but maybe it's a they lose a customer or they see their competitors coming up and they say oh shit we need to make a pivot here and um you know and sometimes that means bringing in people from the outside at more of a mid-range level or uh, or um to you know to come in and, and start changing the culture and changing the direction of the company. But I think it could be either way. I think that, you know, where you see businesses really struggle is where the owner or the founder, the person at the top is stuck in their ways and <laughs> yeah. is unwilling to realize that things are changing. And, um, and that's where you start to see, you know, companies fade. Um, and, and that might be okay for them, you know, like personally, it could be a lifestyle business if they don't want to be bothered and want to, you know, kind of sure. just keep it as is, you know, obviously that, that's all up to them. Um, but you know, they're leaving opportunity on the table. Yeah. But, and yeah, like you said, it comes down to what they want to do too, yeah. but you do have the people that work there, uh, that, you know, if they've invested a lot of their time and, you know, life energy into it, you know, it is in a way kind of leaving them hanging. Sure. But yeah. I, I, I think that's, that's another area that, you know, we're looking to help in is that, you know, when you, what look, do you mean? You know, when you look at, um, organizations to really, like I was saying, I, I think it's, if you really want like a fast growing company to put all the pieces together, you really need, you know, strong people in technology and product. You need strong people in sales and marketing. And um, it's it's hard to build a really solid team. Yeah. Right? And so um, we can help with that. And part of uh, part of the services that we're offering are going to be, you know, like recruiting services to try and help you build teams because we understand how to do that. You know, we scaled up a, a pretty significant team over just a few years yeah. and we're working with partners that can can help us place people. Um, but at the same time, too, you know, we're really looking at like augmenting their staff with our services. And so, you know, maybe you don't have a marketing department, you know, if you're a 10 person company or, you know, maybe five person company or whatever it may be, maybe it's one person. Um, maybe you don't have the resources to, you know, come up with creative and content and, you know, be posting on social media and all that type of stuff. Um, or maybe you don't have an in-house development team and building an in-house development team is, is a, I mean, it's, it's, it's a massive m- undertaking monumental, yeah. and, um, you know, people that, you know, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of stories around failures in technology, well, especially when it's like, you hear all these companies that, you know, it's kind of when they're coming up, even like four years ago at, you see them at trade shows, it's like, Oh, this is awesome. And then it's like the one guy left. Right. And then it's like, well, he was kind of the only person that knew the code. And so we yeah. just kind of have this guy who exactly who knows roughly how to keep it from falling apart. Yeah. So, you know, like a lot of these things, they're expensive. Um, it, it's tough to build a good team. And then there's, there's also like, especially with the technology portion of it, there's a big risk. Yeah. Um, and so, but there's a big reward too. And that's sure. I think that's probably part of it too. That maybe is like, uh, what is it? Once burned twice shy or something like that. But it's like, 
a lot of people don't have these thoughts about building teams that it's really difficult because they just kind of think it's difficult. A lot of it probably came from they hired somebody and they didn't really, even if they knew how to manage it, it didn't like work out perfectly. So then they're like, it's not worth it. But when you actually see like what we had, I don't know, like, you know, a few years ago, it was, it really comes in a, a circle once you have the team humming because it is that it's like iterative in a circle, right? Good customer service. They're on the front lines with the customers, getting feedback, giving that to the the technology team who then takes that, implements it, and builds an even better product. They just released a better product. So now we can take that to sales and marketing. Now these five prospects that wouldn't give us the time of day all of a sudden we have this new section. All right, let's talk. You get one or two of those customers to come back in. Yep. Now they're dealing with customer service. They're having a good experience, but then they want more. They come back to the tech team. And so it's like, you're, you're literally like building a, like a, a tower. It just kind of, it's, yeah. it's iterative on top of those teams working together and actually bringing it full force. I mean, that's, once once i'm not even i won't even i'm i wasn't even a part of it back then but once you guys got that type of system in place it was it was crazy how much the company grew yeah because i mean the people listening might know but it was a family company and we got to see our dad launch it and grow it super fast and then you came on and it was growing and growing and growing but once you brought all those new systems together. You had the the customer service, all this stuff now in-house and growing. Like the company went from good growth to what, like 33% increase like year over year, yeah. even during COVID. Yeah. So it was like, once all of that stuff clicked into place, it became like the investment was actually worth it. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, like as our, as I'm looking at the different companies out there and, and what their needs are, there's all different kind of levels that we're able to plug into to help them out. Yeah. So whether it's, you know, um, helping them with just really a business plan, making sure like, okay, this is, this, this is the right way forward for you and be having you know, people to bounce that off of that could be as like kind of high level as, as we go. Um, or we can get into actually building products for customers and, uh, providing, you know, sales and marketing teams for them. And so it's, I'm really excited about it because, Hell yeah. um, you know, I, I loved, like loved building products, bring them to market, keeping happy customers. And so I'm really excited because there's so many different companies out there that are, like I said, like they're very close to unlocking like a lot of potential. And I want to work with those companies and help them see that, you know, come to fruition. So Hell yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. Nice. Well, uh, so I'm putting together a business plan. Do you want to take a look at it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Can you look at it this weekend? Uh, there's a hurricane coming. You can't look at it in a hurricane? No, I can. I can look at Bastard. it in a hurricane. <laughs> All right. You want to wrap this up? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Any other uh, questions or, or anything? Any other brain buster? No. Uh, where uh, where can people find you? That's a good question. Um, so our website is now up. Um, it is ghcinteractive.com. Uh, you can find us uh, there. You can find us at GHC Interactive on LinkedIn. And you can also follow me on LinkedIn, uh, Greg Hine. And um, yeah, we'll be putting out um, some new content over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I do have a series right now talking about um, MBAA Base, a uh, show that's coming up it's about two months away. I'll be at Base. So if people want to connect face to face, you can find me there in Vegas. In Vegas. Nice. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll promote Chine Productions. So if yeah. you want to have something that looks like this, you want to do a podcast, videos, whatever it might be, but you just want to come sit down, 
talk and then leave and have somebody else take care of everything else. Um, that is what I do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, by the time this goes live, we'll have the website live. So chineproductions.com. I think chine music on uh, Instagram and other than that. Yeah. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me on. It was good to see you, brother. <laughs> we will do it again. We one will day. have we will have a good time again. We shall do this one more time. All Thank right. you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. All right.